What is remarkable about Leonardo's Mona Lisa, Leonardo himself, but of course the Mona Lisa is the signal picture, is the, the reach of, um, of, of the picture. I mean, I've been on the radio in Africa and you know, been to Japan, everywhere. Mona Lisa is known. It is the, the most famous image. It gets everywhere. I mean, I've got my socks, my Mona Lisa socks on, especially for, the, especially for this interview. And... Uh, if he gets on my feet, then he, <laughs> he gets everywhere. Uh, and that happened early. It's very extraordinary. This picture was much copied. Raphael made versions of it, and it had a huge influence. And it was very famous. It was written about early. It was copied early. And this is odd, because it's a portrait of a bourgeois woman who in herself, other than to her family, was of no particular interest, no great significance. Normally, famous portraits are of famous people. Um, kings, queens, dukes, duchesses, etc. So for this portrait of somebody who internationally was a non-entity to gain this leverage during the course of the 16th century and the last hundred years after it was completed is just extraordinary. So this picture has something remarkable about it. You can say it's famous for being famous, but it's more than that. You know, why has this endured for... Um, half a millennium, essentially. Why has this portrait always been an exemplary picture? Even people who don't know about art will know about Mona Lisa. Uh, he used in advertisements, bikini bottoms, and my socks, etc., etc. Um, uh, there's no absolute definitive answer to that. If there was, um, I'd be an expert in marketing and <laughs> creating iconic images. But um, it, it responds to different viewers. So much went into it in terms of science, in terms of poetry, that everyone can relate to it without necessarily knowing all the science and all the poetry. But at the same time, it reacts to you, but it reacts ambiguously. You, know, you think you can see what's there, but if you look at it, there's no outlines. If you look in magnification, the edges of the eyes, the, side, the, the sides of the face, the mouth, they're all blurred using this technique Leonardo had, and he even used his hands pressed into the paint to soften these boundaries. So you've got somebody who communicates with you, but she's not really quite saying what she's communicating. And at the same time, there's all this wonderful beguiling use of light, of landscape, and so on. And we see the portrait written up excitedly, um, at one point in the 17th century, the Duke of Buckingham, who's negotiating the marriage of Charles I to the French Queen Henrietta Maria, or she becomes the queen, his queen, the Duke of Buckingham tries to buy the Mona Lisa, and the king is willing to sell it, but the courtiers will say, no, no, it's the best picture we've got. You know, don't, don't, don't get rid of it to the Duke of Buckingham. He ends up with a copy. Um, which, uh, so it's you know, enormously heavily regarded. Then it rises and rises, a lot of writing about it. In the 19th century, she becomes a femme fatale. If we look at the two great literary effusions on the Mona Lisa by Walter Pater, published in his book, The Renaissance, and by Théophile Gautier, the great art critic, the literary figure in France, she becomes this mysterious femme fatale, the person who uh, inspires laments of, of beloved uh, men, much in the same way as, the, as Dante and Petrarch in the Renaissance. And then in 1909, the picture is stolen. This uh, house painter, odd job man from Italy, Vincent, Vincenzo Perugia, he'd been employed to help put glazing, put glass in the frames and the in the paintings in the Louvre and to clean them up a little bit, to dust them and just make them look slightly more spick and span. And he came in after he'd stopped working there, but he still had his workman's smock and stole the Mona Lisa. It disappeared and there were huge queues to see the blank space on the wall. And we got photographs of people queuing to look at this grubby space on the wall in the Louvre with the two hooks from which he lifted the picture off. So that pushes it further and of course you then got all these 20th century versions, Warhol and, uh, and so on. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary story. And there is no image in the world, certainly in the visual arts, and I think no image in any other area which has a similar reach. Um, it's a remarkable phenomenon.